I am uh, Leon, Leonides Guadarrama. I am from Mexico City. And um, I'm here in Kathmandu to visit Yonsin Rinpoche, Lopon Namdak Tenzin. He's somebody that has touched me very deeply. I wanted to see where, where, where is he, what is he doing here, and just to meet him, just to meet him here in this place. I think he's very unique amongst many, many, many teachers. I think I was very, very lucky to find him and find the Yundrumbon tradition too, which has, which has very nice and very simple, straightforward and powerful practices. And what he teaches, it really helps you to understand your true nature. My view on Yongzhe Rinpoche as a master is uh, very, very authentic. And um, I personally regard him as a, uh, the actual Buddha. So it is not because uh, he is my teacher, not only because he is my teacher, it is because uh, from all uh, qualities that he has built, and then all the activities that he has uh, uh, performed uh, for the uh, sentient beings and for the, uh, the, the teachings, the Buddha's doctrine of the Buddha. So um, I always think and regard him as the example of the real authentic teacher and authentic master. Which way? There? Surly? Wait? We just wait a little bit? Okay. Thank you. I was always interested in myths, always interested in um, seeing how we humans create our view of uh, the world. My background is more like a scientific background. I studied mathematics and then went to study filmmaking. So it's really nice to see you here in your, yeah. your home. Yes, this is my home. That is the good thing. And especially if you look to the east side, mm -hmm. if the weather is good, Mm -hmm. You could see Himalaya, the Everest, is every day. So I, I'm thinking for maybe set up here for coffee shop. <laughs> so then the, somebody put the binocular <clears throat> on the side. Then you could see every day for Everest. <laughs> so what do you think of here? Okay, good. good. You are alone or somebody? Alone. Mm -hmm. So I said I was going, I did this film festival, you remember I told you? Yes. Okay. Told Marina you. also said that. Huh? Marina. 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 Told you. Also told me something. Maybe the problem, because you were, you said we make Samaya with you. So now this is accomplished Samaya, I'll show you. <coughs> yes. you're, you're here, you know? Uh, Inspiration of everything. Mm -hmm. So this okay. is a program, this is a small program. Yeah. I'll show you. So you remember I showed you in the computer? Yes. We even got a letter from oh, yes. the office of Tibet, mm -hmm. supporting everything. Mm -hmm. And Bon went very good. You know, Bon now everybody knows in Mexico. Okay. okay. <laughs> so many films, yeah. you see. You told this to me two years ago. Yes. You told me. Okay. You have created everything. The problem is you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. You told me that. Yes. So I put it here and okay. we, we, we put everything together. Then we had conferences with universities. Oh, yes. With uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center and Shaul. Oh, yes. So uh, they do for cancer research, they do the practice of the five warrior syllables. Yeah. And Zalum, yeah. they give to the cancer patients. Really? And so they get better and they feel much better. I so see. So we're showing this work. Oh, yeah. Oh, then wonderful. he gave the five syllables. Oh, yes. This yeah. 
Aum Hum Ramza. Yes. So this is meeting between science and meditation. Where well, in Mexico? Mexico. And then we make silent film from uh, Prem Sanyas, from mm -hmm. the life of Siddhartha Gautama. Oh, and we had live music, you know? Oh, yeah, good. This film festival that we just did in Mexico was a Buddhist film festival and actually was inspired by him in many ways. So we did this festival to create the awareness that uh, these type of manifestations of culture, philosophy or religion are not something that is, has to be taken for, for granted, that it's very, very important and that it helps to create a culture of peace. This wonderful festival, we've had more than 14,000 paid tickets and more than 35,000 people assisted to, to public events with monks in Mexico. They were, they were welcomed by traditional indigenous people of Mexico. I think in all cultures, also in the Inca culture, and uh, you have these mythical places, no? like the Shambhala, where it is a place that does exist, but it does exist on a different level of reality. And it's really a place where uh, you do have like a broader consciousness somehow. No? So this almost lingering place was the birthplace, as he explained, of Tompa Shenrap, who was the first primordial Buddha and brought these teachings into our times. That's at least was, that was what he was saying, right? But it is not publicly visible. You can't go by the plane or ticket or <laughs> ship or nothing. You have to only, for if you wanted to interesting or wanted to go there is only purely you have to pack the same and pull away to his instruction how to go there but there is a the uh, i heard in the early time somebody has wrote to shambhala uh, the map or shambhala. guide or something but Shambhala is uh, the official in our text says one part like this state, one in Omolonde, there is one place called Shambhala, mm -hmm. or sometimes they called for the synonym as Omolonde. Yeah, but it is uh, the real one is uh, only for the one part of the. Uh, northeast side, there's uh, the district, one of district. the portion for country. That is the uh, thing. But uh, anyway, all the country is not publicly visible. You have to be be there is uh, through the prayers and practicing. So have to be purified your own eye. Then you could see and you have to prepare it for your mind, body, legs, everything. Then you could be there. In the Bon tradition, they see Sakyamuni also as a reincarnation of a series of hundreds of Buddhas that had existed way before the historic Buddha. We are 
as much clear and clever and think it is completely the, uh, bounded by the ignorant emotions and by poison consciousness, everything. But we are not trying to release from there, no idea. So always wanted to be more and more go on and on. So that is why, like uh, the uh, we called for the uh, there's a beetle goes in the wool, beetle <laughs> goes in the wool. Mm -hmm. It's more and more move and more and more tied up. More complex. Yeah. Yes, finally dead into the wool. <laughs> That is similar. You see, uh, whatever we do, everything is like beetle working. We are now in St. Darjali, and that is dus the center of the Bun in Europa, as you can call it. There is another another center in uh, America, that is led by the leader de leerling van Rinpoche, dat heet Serenity Ridge. En verder weet ik dat er ook een plek is in Duitsland, Bouwenhof. En samen zijn dat eigenlijk ja, een beetje de drie centra voor de bun. Vanaf onze geboorte eh, hebben we daarmee te maken, omdat mijn vader daar al vanaf zijn negentiende is hij al bezig met zijn spirituele pad te vinden. Op een gegeven moment is hij in contact gekomen met eh, Lopen, met, eh, of Rinpoche, zo noemen wij eh, Lopen vaak. Zo ben ik er eigenlijk altijd al mee opgegroeid. Maar het enige is dat ik er vroeger zelf wat minder mee had en dat is een beetje later pas gekomen. En dat is eigenlijk vier jaar geleden, toen kwam ik hier op het centrum en toen... Had ik opeens een, uh, voelde ik een connectie ermee, zeg maar, die ik daarvoor nog niet gevoeld had. Ik kwam hier natuurlijk in een tijd dat ik nog aan het opgroeien was. Dus toen was ik ongeveer 20, 19. En toen zat ik nog met heel veel twijfels en vragen. En dan heb ik echt als, 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 aan Rinpoche als aan geen ander heb ik iemand gehad die mij kon leiden bij mijn twijfels. En hij heeft echt op, verschei, op verschillende momenten heeft hij echt een bepalende rol in mijn leven gespeeld door bepaalde dingen te zeggen die mij heel erg hebben geholpen. Om op dat moment de juiste keuzes te maken. Dus, en voor Ruby is dat een beetje anders. Of in die zin dat Ruby is er eigenlijk niet heel erg veel mee bezig. Nou, in ieder geval veel minder dan Isabel. Ja. Maar ik ben er dus ook wel mee opgegroeid. Dat en, zeker wel. Dat sowieso. Alleen het is wel anders, omdat ik, nou ja, maar misschien ook omdat ik jonger ben. Wie weet komt dat. Ik bedoel, ik ben hierna uiteindelijk natuurlijk toch. En uh, in de eerste instantie wilde ik ook heel graag zien wat uh, mijn vader, mijn moeder en mijn zusje hier kwamen doen. En hoe een week hier eruit ziet, want ze zijn hier elk jaar met z'n allen. Um, alleen, ik vind het toch wel heel bijzonder om hier te zijn. Dus ik weet ook eigenlijk helemaal niet hoe dit gaat uitpakken. Voor hetzelfde geld ben ik, vanaf nu ben ik er wel veel vaker. En voor hetzelfde geld niet. Dus ik heb eigenlijk mm -hmm. geen idee hoe het gaat uitpakken. Het is heel fijn als je één traditie en één leraar vindt met wie je echt de diepte in kan gaan. Maar daar moet je ook niet overhaast in zijn. Dus dat, uh, dat muntje viel pas bij me toen ik de lopen uh, ontmoette. Dat was in uh, 1991. Ik had toen al verschillende boeddhistische leraren uh, gehad. Vooral geïnteresseerd in Dzogchen onderricht. En ik hoorde toen dat uh, lopen rondreisde in Europa... Dus toen heb ik hem uitgenodigd om naar Nederland te komen. Een kleine onderricht georganiseerd. En van het een kwam het ander. Ik was daar echt heel erg door geïnspireerd. Ik ben hem dus weer gaan ontmoeten. En langzamerhand ook hem in Nepal gaan bezoeken. Vaker uitgenodigd naar Nederland. En op een gegeven moment bracht Lopen het idee om ook iets in Europa op te richten. When Yonzi Rinpoche came to Mexico, it was uh, the year I started following Buen. I asked him permission to follow him. And uh, it was an immediate welcome 
And uh, it, the presence of Yonsin Rinpoche opened my heart in a way it was um, spontaneous. It, the result of it was I started crying and crying. I couldn't stop. I had to go to another room. I didn't know it be, to explain it. This opened, opened something in me. I'm not really sure what, I don't, can't explain it. But to me, his presence, his compassion, to feel his great compassion was the most important thing for me. In the Western countries, they're looking for new beliefs and they come here thinking they have found a new belief when believing is empty, is nothing. <clears throat> Several purposes, you see. First of all, uh, you have everything is uh, trying to find out from the object side. From the object side? Yes, yes. everything, everything. And always doing it this way, you'd never look back to the, the source of your own mind, how to work and how to follow and how to create it by the so you you always believe the creator is somewhere else. Not thinking for creator is your own consciousness. The real con the creator is your consciousness, is a cr real creator, practical. Don't look into anywhere. Wat uh, Bun onderscheidt van boeddhisme is dat uh, binnen Bunpo heb je een spiritueel pad. Het is uh, beoefeningen die je helpen voorbij dit leven alleen. Maar er is ook een heel lichaam aan uh, onderricht, aan teksten, aan beoefeningen... die specifiek voor dit leven bedoeld zijn. Methoden hoe je de relatie tussen de mens of de mensheid en de natuur herstelt. Uh, Methoden om te genezen. Astrologie. Maar in de Bumpo is het een... Uh, wezenlijk onderdeel van het onderricht. Lopen en heeft van zijn 19e tot 23e bij een van zijn leraren in een god geleefd en dag en nacht gestudeerd en gemediteerd. Toen hij daarvan terugkwam in het meest vooraanstaande Bumpo-klooster van Tibet, er zijn zo'n 200 klooster en het meest vooraanstaande heet Menri. En hij is toen op zijn 27e is hij de lopen de hoofdleraar geworden van dat klooster. En daarmee als het ware de hoofdleraar van onze traditie. Dat was nog in het uh, oude Tibet. Hij had nog nooit had hij een vliegtuig gezien of een auto gezien of wat ook. Dat was het oude middeleeuwse Tibet. I left Tibet in uh, 1960, so too late, you see. People ran away from Tibet in uh, early 1959, so I was late. On the way, they shoot, the Chinese soldiers shoot my uh, colleagues, particularly for my uh, very close friend, one of Delon which a painter and very good person. He was killed beside me. 
so then uh, finally uh, they keep me for 10 months in the military uh, campaign. But they, Chinese. They, they shot you too. Yeah, yeah, yes. I was 10 months so completely the, uh, my leg is screwball, you see. Then yeah. painful and very hard life. So I decided not better not to go to concentration camp and run away. Doesn't matter for short time or longer time to die. Anyhow, have to die. So then run away. And successively, 22 nights, you see, we came from there to reach to the border in the Mustang. We have no food, nothing, just on the border, finish everything. But still, we are very happy. <laughs> Save lives, you see, we are as human, you see. single-handedly revived the uh, Bumpo tradition in India after the uh, Tibetans went into uh, exile. And uh, he originally organized uh, the Bumpo monastery and Bumpo community at Dolanji in uh, India. And then he also began the publishing of uh, Bumpo texts because uh, these weren't brought out of uh, Tibet uh, at that time. Uh, the Cultural Revolution was very disastrous for the uh, Bumpos, and so the library at Menri Monastery was destroyed you know, with the rest of the f facilities in there. And so the, uh, the Lopan uh, brought only a few books with him, and uh, published them in New Delhi. That was how I first came into uh, contact with him when I was first in India in 1969-1970. But it's only been quite recently that they've been able to republish the uh, whole canon of Bumpo uh, texts.
Hij heeft twee grote opleidingsinstituten die nu in onze traditie de, de belangrijkste opleidingsinstituten. Het derde zeg maar, grote instituut wat hij opricht en waar we nu aan werken is wat we hier zien, hier in Frankrijk. Uh, nou, wat heel interessant is omdat we experimenteren met nieuwe vormen. Omdat we natuurlijk toegankelijk moeten zijn voor westerse mensen, voor het westerse bewustzijn. One can make comparisons of Dzogchen with uh, other mystical uh, traditions, whether we find them in uh, Christianity or in the uh, Kabbalah of Judaism or uh, Sufism, Ismaili tradition, or even a Dwight of uh, Vedanta. Uh, and there may be some historical connections. They interest me because of the uh, connection of uh, Dzogchen uh, with uh, Kashmir in the early period, which preceded historically Kashmiri Shaivism, and also some possible uh, connections with uh, Neoplatonism. And of course, in Central Asia, uh, by that I mean uh, Bactria, northern Afghanistan, before the time of Christ, there were uh, Greek colonies established there. And after the time of Alexander, at least, uh, they became Buddhist. And they were historically important in uh, inventing the image of the Buddha, which uh, hadn't existed before the uh, Greeks became uh, Buddhists. Many Western scholars, uh, knowing very little about Bun, said, oh, it's uh, shamanism and they sacrifice animals and uh, so on. And in fact, uh, the first time the Lopun spoke in Berkeley, California, it was at a shamanic center. And he gave his usual talk, uh, introduction to Bon. At the end of that, some people raised their hand. Yes, Rinpoche, but what about shamanism? What do you do there? And he looked at me, he didn't know what the word meant. So I said, Rinpoche, Jankri, which is what they call them in Nepal. He said, oh, Jankri, no, no, we don't do this. We never sacrifice uh, a animals, <laughs> this kind of thing. So just like the Buddhist schools, uh, Bon is totally against the practice of uh, animal uh, sacrifice. Now, there are many old Tibetan practices which form one of the doorways of Bon. If the three higher doorways are Sutra, Tantra, and Dzogchen, uh, the lower doorway uh, we might call shamanic practices, which is dealing with the nature spirits. wanted to meet Lopon because when I saw his photograph actually I kind of had a strong feeling. In, uh, in Soviet Union still, we had still had Soviet Union so Buddhism was forbidden and uh, we can only go, go to jail if they find a uh, Buddhist text. <laughs> Five years I think they were giving that. Anyway, so when I went to the West uh, I kind of was looking for a possibility to meet him and I met him in Amsterdam first time. So I'm interested in, in Dzogchen but not only, I, I'm also interested in Bonpo culture. I did research uh, for many years now. So last year I published a book, a uh, comparative study between uh, Siberian uh, shamanic tradition called Bo Morgel and uh, Tibetan Bo, many aspects. So that's why. 
is a fantastic uh, master. He explains very, very clearly how to uh, practice Dzogchen itself. So I had some Dzogchen teachings before, but when I met him, I really understood what, uh, what other lamas were saying before. I kind of had an idea, but not, not, not exactly very clear. And uh, also many aspects of Tibetan culture and the rituals and uh, history and uh, everything, because he's like a uh, encyclopedia, really. There is no other person like him, because he has a title, Yongjin. Yongjin means uh, uh, teacher of the teachers. So basically, he is holding uh, all the bomb transmissions, the ma major and minor also, like all the lineages are coming through, through him. And it's because of him now we have born in the West. Is there something special that you want to do in Mexico? For? For, I don't know, if there's anything you want to do or for happen me. in Mexico for you, for the Junrumbon, for... Oh, yes, everything. this is really, this, uh, that is a huge thing, not simple thing, but they have uh, paid great for the stupa is uh, for the center, for starting, growing, for the uh, the, uh, the religion. Mm -hmm. So then, hopefully, that will be very important one. Yes, that is the great, you see, the 35 meters, you see, yeah. that is a huge. But you wanted that stupa. Then. Yeah, yeah, really, it is great. When I went to my pilgrimage in Tibet, I was collecting sacred earth and relics for the stupa. For example, a hermit monk in Chunsong, very sacred place in Dangra Yumso, he went to his cave, we, we used to practice there, and he gave me from his very humble bag pieces and earth from his own pilgrimages all over the Shanshung area for the stupa. They were so happy that in Mexico we were building a stupa because they know the meaning. They know it will change things. They, they, are, they have the guarantee that things will change. For example, Tenzing Wang Gyal Rinpoche has told us, we are instructors of the Bon tradition, some of us, to go and uh, attend these places, like Tijuana, for example where all these violence is, no? And uh, maybe give public talks and convey some basic, basic love, affection, joy, some tools that we know to access that, no? As far as counteracting the violence, I think our offerings, our prayers, our own way of living, is the only way we can help. Lopon Sanjo Tenzin was a great Sokchen teacher. He was loved and revered by many. And uh, the fact that he's, he chose Mexico to be born in Mexico, is very important for us in the sense that he's recognizing something in that land, in that people. The fact that your teacher yeah. died and reincarnated mm -hmm. in Mexico, why in Mexico? Why, well, I don't know. That is not knowing. But it happened. Yeah. Maybe. He's learning Tibetan. He's uh, learning the drum, the bell, the mantras, the everything. And he corrects you. He does correct you. I made a mistake with uh, in the Yeshe Walmo uh, practice uh, with the, I think the bell, and he said, no, 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 start again. Is he strict? Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. 
थे थे नाउ मैं और द संगम मेंबर्स आर ओ वेलकम एंड होप फॉर सीट कंफर्टेबल मोस्ट ऑफ द संगम मेंबर्स आर ओ हर्ड व्हाट आई एम सेइंग यूजुअली रिपीटेडली ईयर आफ्टर ईयर बट द पर्टिकुलरली आई वांटेड टू टेल why we are gathering in this place every year this is purpose is we have to think carefully and seriously to think all the humans can understand what is the situation in our during the lifetime the jyoti view is uh, no promise to anything because it is beyond of perception if this is nothing to do with perception you can't say yes or not nothing so it is better to leave as it is then it is okay <laughs> if you do something then it is a promise or something you are went in the wrong way Okay, it's uh, looks like very simple and chat up easily, but it has uh, if you follow to them more and more the hardship to understand their deeper and deeper, because this is a very special way to understand and to be following to the t- teachings and understanding, but go deeper and then more. hard and it is a very subtle understanding background Zogchen is definitely a Buddhist uh, philosophy and system of meditation because it assumes a uh, uh, foundation of uh, uh, abhidharma psychology and yogacara terminology and so on and uh, basic uh, Buddhist meditation practices of uh, uh, shamatha and vipassana Zokchen is very accessible for westerners because there's a minimum of ritualism there also in terms of meditation uh, a minimum of visualization and so on you don't have to visualize incredibly complicated deities and huge mandala palaces and uh, so on you just have to uh, bring your your yourself and then uh, sit down and meditate Vind de leer is heel gecompliceerd omdat het eigenlijk de ho- als de hoogste leer wordt gezien binnen boeddhisme en bun. Het, het heet Tokchen en dat is eigenlijk de hoogste weg en dat is het heeft heel weinig handvaten en is eigenlijk gewoon ge- uitsluitend gebaseerd op uh, me- meditatie op de natuurlijke staat en op, uh, op die manier boeddhaschap bereiken en dat is echt een een van de moeilijkste wegen omdat er gewoon geen handvaten zijn en geen handleiding voor is. Het is gewoon met heel weinig instructies. If the nature is empty, then it is uh, everything is uh, empty goes to the nihilism. So no good, no bad, or everything is uh, no exist or something like this. That is called Pudetawa Pungji Chetako, means nihilism, goes to the nihilism. So this tree is for the deviation for the view. So that is means to the uh, the already I'm saying for the natural state after the uh, liberated the thoughts, leave them. If you do something, this is trying to this or that something to point out by the perception or thinking. So you are completely wrong way. Better not to think anything. Leave them. Then it is pure. Thank you.
I have the feeling always like he's a man that's sitting on the edge of the universe, like that, like looking everything in a timeless way where he sees creation and destruction happening at the same time and everything evolving the way he was talking about. Uh, the universe exists to the different planets there. Many universes. Oh, yes, many. many you planets. can't count them, like a dust in the earth. So any of this, when it is ready to be uh, the, uh, settled for the elements or universal, external, like a vessel, mm -hmm. and then starting to the uh, sentient beings, uh, they transformed and emigrated spontaneously by the, their own connection, by the family course. course. They already be there. This, uh, the sex rams already be there. Into including for these beings doesn't much to feeling to change or something new things or old things. But they have spontaneously connected with these places wherever they wanted to be. Hell, Supurita, Animal, or Hume, Asura, or Devaloka, whatever they have connection. For the six rams. Okay. Yes. There is no beginning of time, and he said it. This it, this universe will disappear and appear and disappear and appear many times. He said and he he once said he didn't say it here that you would you would not need a visa to be there again. And then he said also you will have not not a break. He said it no between one universe disappearing and another appearing. You will have not a break. Your consciousness will be always there manifesting again and again and again and again in uh, this realm of existence. I always have this feeling like he's some sort of a witness of the whole creation somehow and he only wants you to realize that, like he said, that everything we see is like a, a film being projected on a screen that when you go and look closely, there is nothing there. There is only a screen. Look to the thought. Thought itself is disappearing. After the disappearing, don't edit nothing. Leave them completely as it is. So that is the pure. Il Majipa means to the nothing to integrate with perception. So that is the, the doing. Second, the Gumba Il Majipa. And then Chopa uh, Londo Majipa. With this realization, nature, and without any integrate with perception, thought. Then whatever your movements with body, speech, mind, anything, is nothing to do with them. For that is no anything to the uh, thesis with this or right or wrong or nothing. Doing something, that is called for the illusion activities. Als ik kijk naar mijn vader en naar Isabel, dan kan ik uh, wel zien dat, het, dat ik het idee heb dat het hun leven veel meer 
uh, waarde geeft. En mm. dat ze toch... Mag ik, ja. kan ik dat zeggen? Ja, ik vind het wel leuk om te horen. Dat gevoel heb ik. Dat het, dat het echt een beetje inhoud aan hun leven geeft. Ik zou niet echt willen zeggen dat ik... echt iets ja, heel erg mis daar. Voordat ik uh, in contact raakte met uh, boeddhisme. Maar um, ik ervaar het wel als een hele erge verrijking. En als ik er nu op terugkijk, zou ik willen zeggen dat ik een leidraad miste. Uh, zeg maar, wat te doen in moeilijke situaties. Hoe met lastige situaties om te gaan. En, en zin. Gewoon een soort van zingeving. Dat ontbrak daarvoor wel. Maar het grappige is, als je het nog niet hebt, dan mis je het ook niet. Dus je weet ook niet precies wat je... Toen miste ik het nog niet, maar nu weet ik wel dat dat toen ontbrak. Als je hoofdzaak van bijzaken wilt scheiden... Of als je uh, bepaalde keuzes wilt maken. Of als je je ongelukkig voelt. Dan denk je van, oké, okay, vroeger wist ik niet wat ik nu moest doen. Maar nu ga ik even te raden bij de les die ik heb gevolgd. En um, weet, heb ik daar misschien een, uh, kan ik daardoor meer antwoord krijgen op mijn vragen, zeg maar. Je focus verandert van de externe wereld naar meer het geluk zoeken in jezelf. We have our conventional reality defined by our society and our culture and so on. But we know reality through our mind. And our mind does not know reality uh, directly. So we do not live in reality. We live in our conceptions. I don't think that this type of um, philosophy should be taken as an escape. Actually, it's the contrary. It's a deep plunge into your own self, into your own shadow. And that, I think, is a true benefit of this, uh, that there are ways of living much better than the ones that we Westerners have gone through. We have everything, we're wealthy, and. We're completely devastated inside. Dokchan is eigenlijk een ervaring, een staat die je zelf ervaart en die niet te bevatten is in woorden, die je ook niet kunt bereiken via een intellectueel concept. Je kunt niet middels een concept ontdekken wat Dzogchen is. Het is iets wat je in het centrum van je eigen bewustzijn ervaart. Ik kan denk ik wel zeggen dat ik uh, glimpsen en soms wat langere glimpsen van die natuurlijke staat heb ervaren. Eh, zodanig dat het me blijft inspireren om die glimps maar groter te maken en de rest van mijn leven erin in te integreren. Dat 
to the course or whether you make for the uh, virtues, merits, it doesn't go better. If you do for the simple killers or doing such a things, it doesn't go worse. So nature is very good, clear, <laughs> always clear. Mind, our thought process, gives uh, rise to time and impermanence and so on, and hence uh, our uh, uh, suffering in samsara. But the nature of the mind is beyond this. The best way to illustrate that is to use the example of uh, the mirror, that the reflections that appear in the mirror are correspond to our uh, thoughts or what we mean generally by mind. Whereas uh, the nature of the mirror itself uh, corresponds to the nature of mind. Now, if you have a mirror, you can set various objects in front of it. And it doesn't matter whether these uh, objects are uh, light or dark, uh, good or bad, beautiful or ugly. They in no way affect or modify or change the nature of the mirror. In the same way, uh, whatever thoughts arise into consciousness, they in no way un or change or modify uh, the nature of the mind. Even it is abiding, it is pervaded within every individual being, still there is conflict, disaster, all the problems are there. So this is not because we are lack of this nature. This is because we are lack of understanding, the realization of this nature. So we don't realize who we are, what we are, uh, what is our nature of the mind. So the whole purpose in Dzogchen is not to acquire something we don't possess at the moment because the nature of mind is always there and its rigpa or intrinsic awareness is always there. If it wasn't, there would be no awareness or consciousness or life anywhere in the universe. And a Bhutanese man, he can be the teacher. Yes. Did I get that right? Yeah. See. He, and the students could come from the Tibet. The Aikok and or... from Tibet, you see. Yeah. Because they did Tibet, and now they have a uh, puppet, the money or everything. They make it for the very good statues as they gilded for the copper mm. or something. Things, but very dangerous, you see, very bad things. They spend it so much, but not good quality at all. So, so I can't say to them, but I thought this as the people, new people, to train it properly, go back to Tibet, and going to be, they can see the which is good or nice or something, re, re, the right way. Yeah. Always you're starting new projects, Rinpoche. <laughs> yes, it looks like this is uh, yeah. not according to the age. But uh, mind is uh, mind is not old. The body is old. Yeah. <laughs> the guidance of the Lama is very important because we're all easily succumb to our uh, obscurations and uh, misunderstandings and so on. So the Lama is there to point out to us uh, when we're doing the right thing and our view is developing in a proper way or when we are deviating and uh, falling into ego inflation and things like this. So uh, the Lama is very crucial as a guide. If you wanted to. 
the belief is just you can believe yourself. Is I'm good man. You can believe yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you are a good man or not is not sure, you see. Yes. If you do good things, it's certainly whether you are a good man, because you are real one. Okay. So you have to trust, you have to trust you can make things. Yeah. And then things will happen. Sure. Okay. Wilt u naar aanleiding van deze uitzending reageren of een gratis programmagids bestellen? Bezoek dan onze website boeddhistischeomroep.nl DVD's van onze programma's kunt u bestellen op 010 411 3977.